Good morning, everybody. Well, um, this is Carla Sandoval calling you here from Los Angeles, California. And um, I am super excited to be sharing this call series with you guys. As many of you know, we've been doing this for quite some time now. And um, we're going to, you know, we've been doing a lot of things about business, not business, um, personal development, having self-consciousness, leadership. We took it over to sales the growth culture, we've been having all kinds of amazing, amazing calls. And what I want to do with you guys for the next couple of weeks is I want to start creating, you know, because we're all on this journey on these calls, yes, to become better people, to, you know, to have a more successful business, et cetera, right? And so one of the things that I wanted to do with you guys is that I wanted to share with you, I'm actually taking a success seminar every week. And last week it started, so it was just amazing. I take it every Wednesday. So what I thought I would do is, um, actually, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you guys what I'm getting from these, from these seminars. It's a three-hour seminar. However, I am going to try to condense it as best as I possibly can because the information that we're given is just transformational. So here's the seminar that we're going to be looking at, and that is, of course, it's called a success seminar, but really we're going into investigating what is our current paradigm of success. If you don't understand the word paradigm, it's like, you know, what we, well, you might want to look it up in the dictionary, but it's like what we feel that it's like what's already there, right? So, and it fits into like a box, if you will. So, we're going to start looking at that. So, you must want to get a piece of paper and a pencil. And I'm actually going to encourage you. I know many times in these calls, I ask you guys, you know, I give you guys homework. I'm really going to request for you to really take it on. And I'm not assuming that you haven't, but I'm really going to request that you really, really take it on because I honestly do believe that this call series could really start to shift. Um, a lot of things for many people, and what is it? What does it mean to be successful? Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Make sure that long lines are muted. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and investigate what is the current paradigm when we think of success. And you know, here's the thing that we want to start looking at, and that is, you know, when we have, um, okay, well, let's put that aside. Okay, let let, let me get my head here. Um, wrapped around here. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So let's start, let's start, let's start thinking about, first of all, what have we been doing on these calls and what are we doing when, when we think of our business, okay? Because as we have been sharing in the, since the beginning of these calls, and that is everything rises and falls in leadership. And that we've also been exploring that really our success or our life or how things turn out is really a reflection of us. So like we are at the cause of our life. We are at the cause of our business. So if things are not going as we want, we totally have the power to completely shift that direction. Now, in my, it's simple, but perhaps it's not as easy. And one of the foundations that we have been really talking about is this whole thing about t t working as a team. And, you know, I know many of us have our meetings, our weekly meetings with our, with our, you know, with our groups and things like that, or you have call conferences, whatever you have that constitutes within a group. So we're going to start looking at, here's um, what the, a company that constitutes inside what everyone is standing for has a huge chance to succeed. So what does that mean? As we talked about in the growth culture, we talked about that, you know, I challenged the whole concept that there is an I in team, that when you can determine what is a person's personal interest, and if that person's, in per if that person's personal interest, there we go, is inside the team's interest, okay, we have a bigger shot at winning. For example, we talked about the World Cup, right? If a person, I am not interested in winning a World Cup. So, it, so my personal interest is not in alignment with the team's interest. Therefore, I'm like, quote, unquote, the weak link, right? However, if every player on the team, if their personal interest is in alignment, called let's win the World Cup, in alignment with the team's interest, they're now a unit. So when a company, when your company con uh, constitutes inside what you're standing for, like what you're personally standing for, what's important to you, we have a bigger shot at winning. 
Okay. So when we're going to talk about success and start again working as a team, you want to start looking at once you are, you start sharing, once people start sharing, what is important to them, what success means to them. Okay, which we're going to talk a lot about that because the I that's talking about what success is, we're going to look at that too. But let's just stick with this for a second. Once people start sharing, you will start to relate to him or her in a whole different way. See, what happens many times is we think we know what, what the, our, we feel or assume that our success definition is everybody's success definition so for example like a soccer player might think like why wouldn't somebody want to work, win the world cup and i'm thinking like i don't have any interest right and for in his world that's like super important super significant in my world it's cool but it's not like i wouldn't like you know train hours and die on the field for it right so you want to start looking at what is, you know, or not looking at, but you want to start sharing with your team and start having your team share what is success for them. And we're going to talk a lot. Of, I'm going to give you some questions to ask them. But why that is so important is because that really is going to empower what people are creating. And if you as a unit, as a team, right, Mark, he's just always talking about as a unit, we can get to five billion as a unit. We can get to ten billion, right? As a unit, your city can be put on the map. As a unit, your fit camp can explode, but not individually. It is as a team, as a group, that you will be able to generate success. Because one of the things we've been talking about, or we talked about on one of the calls, and that is, you cannot do things alone. And I know we think we can. I know that has been one of my biggest, biggest, biggest challenges is to think that I could generate success on my own. Now, I can, as everybody else is capable of, but number one, it's not as fun, and number two, there is a limit. But when as a unit, as what you can do as a group, there really isn't a limit of what you can and cannot do. So when you start sharing with each other what success like, now let's talk about, for example, as a team, you want to talk about what is, what is going to be the success of the city, the success of the SDS, the success of the thick camp, and everybody starts sharing, a whole new world will emerge. Like, boom, like magic. It will appear. I challenge you, okay, and I encourage you to do this, to start talking to your team, like, what is success like for you? What is success for you? Like, if the SDS were to be successful, what would have to happen in order for you to say, man, that SDS was super successful? Or that fit camp, for the fit camp to be successful, what would need to happen? For the HOM to be successful, what would need to happen? Whatever it is that you're working on, okay, you start asking these types of questions and just watch how a new world will emerge. A new possibility that you never thought was possible will show up. And if you empower what people are creating and everybody gets under that commitment, it's unstoppable, unstoppable. For example, many of you guys have experienced getting to the next level. When everybody starts to share their own personal goals and then people start creating, oh, my gosh, this possibility of, like, let's say you're, let's, let's say somebody was qualifying to a president's team, right? And everybody is, like, sharing, you know, what, 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 what is it going to be like to have a new president's team on the team? For the, for the city to have that presidency member, et cetera, and that everybody gets under that commitment. It, it's, it's the power behind that is, and I can tell you from personal experience, it is unbelievable what can happen, like really, okay? So now what are we going to do with all these calls here is start, number one, for you to start doing that. Start sharing. Let the new world emerge, okay? So when you start to contribute, um, to, to contribute to you what other people have been contributing to me, that's the kind of idea you want to start getting. It's like all these calls, you guys, the STS, the Big Camps, whatever it is that you're learning, start contributing to your guys what people have been contributing to you, okay? So, sorry, I wrote that on my notes because I was thinking about you guys when I was writing these notes. Okay, so here we go. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Now, here's the con here's a, a, a thing that I'm also going to put as a foundation of these calls or for anything you go to, and that is the time we share 
at these on these calls, the time that you share at the HOM, at the SDS, at the fit camp, okay, you 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 want to go into that as if they're really really special, not like oh yeah here we go again, okay? Because when what happens when you show up with something like oh yeah here we go again? Number one, you're not present. And you're, like, waiting for that magical moment, right? Or, like, you'll start having things like, um, oh, I've already heard this before, okay? So I'm going to challenge you and encourage you to really go into everything this week, okay? So we're talking about a new world emerging in your team, in yourself, when it comes to success. For that to happen, you – well, I shouldn't say this. Hold on. Well, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say it like this. I'll say it for myself. For a new world to emerge in my life, for a new phenomenon to boom, pop up, right, I need to show up as a different person. I need to show up not as the past, but as a whole new Carla, right? And the only way that's going to happen is if I go into things creating, okay? So you have the opportunity to create, okay, what, what is there for you. So, for example, if we're going to go into these calls, I want you to come to these calls and say, like, 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 um, like with this whole children, you know, your children are so great, right? Because you do anything or like puppies, puppies are so great. You leave their house, you come back and they, they're so excited, like they haven't seen you in months, right? Because they're creating, they're discovering you for the first time as if it was the first time. They're creating that opportunity to be alive and happy with you. They're not thinking, oh, man, it's you again. But so many of us go around life like that, right? So the first thing I'm going to encourage you to do is to show up to things this week, relate to people this week as an opportunity to create. Here's what I want you to get. There is no throwaway conversation. There's no throwaway conversation. Don't go to an HOM thinking, oh, I already heard this introduction to the HOM. I bet you they're not saying it word for word like they did last week. I bet the big camp, the STS, is not exactly 100% the same. It's not. It's impossible, okay? If there's one person in the room that wasn't there the week before, it's different. I want you to get that. That one person in the room that wasn't there the week before has completely changed the experience of that meeting. Even if they say, even if they don't say anything, because their energy, their space, who they are in the room, completely alters the energy and the space and the creation of that room for that for that particular meeting. So there's no throwaway conversation. So don't go into things like, oh, I didn't come for this. Or don't go into things like, oh, I can't wait until they get to the real stuff. I can't wait till they get to the real training. You know, somebody at the extravaganza really broke my heart because I was like, hey, what did you guys think about the training, right? And on Saturday, I thought was I thought the whole weekend was amazing. On Saturday, there was a lot of recognition, but there was training. If you were present and if you were creating it for yourself, you would have gotten something from every single session if you were present and if you were intentional about capturing something. This particular person said, oh, it was good, but I can't wait till they get to the real stuff. See, there is no throwaway conversation, okay? It's like, I can't wait till they get the real, I can't, I can't wait till they get to the real thing. No, 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 this is it. This is it. And the universe, you know, I don't know, I don't know if you guys believe this, but the universe makes no mistakes. Okay, it will only respond to orders. So if you're thinking like, oh, I can't wait till you get to the real stuff, your brain checks out, and maybe something that was said that day at that moment could have been completely life-changing, but because your brain's like waiting for something in the future that you don't even know if it's going to happen or not, you're missing out on the now, okay? So I'm really going to encourage you guys to really start – you know, being aware of that. And this is when you want to start looking at success, you know, it's a result of you creating your world. You creating, what is that, what does that world of success look like for me? Okay. So, you know, we're going to go on this whole, we're going to go to work. There we go. We're going to go to work on transformation. So number one, here's the first question I want you to look at. So that's, I wanted to kind of establish the foundation, but here's what I want you to look at. Number one, when you think of success, there are upsides and there are downsides. There's a whole world that shows up when you think of success. Like, for example, when you think of Disneyland, a whole world shows up. You might think, like, oh, my gosh, Mickey, Meanie, or you might think, oh, the long line, 
right? Whatever it is for you, that's what shows up when you think of Disney. Now, so let's think about success. So number one, write this down. You want to do this for yourself and you want to ask your guys this. When you say success, there's a world that shows up. There's a world there. So what is the upside of success? When you think of success, what is the upside of success? You want to write all those things down. Then, number two, what are the downsides of success? There's some, for example, Disneyland, there's long lines, right? So there's upsides to success in everybody's mind, and there's a downsides to success, okay? And why we're going to start looking at this is because this is your current paradigm of what, you're, what, you're, what, you're, what you think of success to be. There's upsides and there's downsides. Now, here's what's really crazy is that we're always judging our levels of success or the, we're judging the levels of success by measurements of many times, many, almost I would say always, they're not even our measurements. They're not even things that we determine. They're things that either our parents, our exterior, like we just fell into what we think is successful, Right? And so we're going to start taking a look at that because when you're giving success or the, you know, for success based on other measurements, like other people's measurements of success. So like, let's say, for example, my, you know, my father loves soccer, right? And let's say he put me into soccer because he wanted to one day win the World Cup. And, you know, that's so all of a sudden that is my goal. I didn't even know I got that goal. I didn't, even want, I didn't even want the World Cup. But all of a sudden, my level of success would be, oh, my gosh, the day I get that World Cup, I'm going to be successful. See, so when it's based on those types of measurements by other people, you can get lost. And when you accomplish them, like you go, go working after them or, you know, those measurements of success that, you know, that, that now you have to deal with, like, the, you know, the training and the, the, the long travels and all those things become like consequences rather than enjoyment. When my, my, my instructor's name is Jerry, when Jerry said that, I was like, oh, my gosh, isn't that the truth? You know, how many times do we hear about people, you know, being a doctor or whatever, going into a career that wasn't even designed by them? But it was like, or like, for example, I have a lot of friends that are in politics, and they're in politics because their grandpa was in politics, their grandmother was in politics, right? And then all of a sudden you're like, well, why are you in politics? It's like, oh, you know, our family, it's not like because I want to, I want to, I want to make a difference to my community. It was like, oh, the first thing out of their mouth is like, oh, you know, my whole family's been in it. This is what we do. And it's like becomes your identity. But it wasn't, it was never even yours. So what happens is when we have success based on others' measurements, like other people, other people's measurements of success, we can get lost. And many times a lot of the things that we do become consequences because they're not necessarily, we're not a design from you. I thought that was, I thought that was, I was like, oh, interesting. Okay. So, um, so here's when we start talking about, when we start looking at the whole picture of success, it's never a standalone phenomenon. It never stands alone. Success is always being compared to something else. Are we more, do we have more than this person, more or less than that person? Are we prettier or not as pretty? Do we, you know, you know what, you, you get the picture. It's never like, it never stands alone. It's always, for us to give it a definition, we're always comparing it to something else. And I love what he said. He says, so when it's, when you're, when it's not a standalone phenomenon, like it's not a by itself, for example, like a rose, a rose is a rose, right? But then if you all of a sudden go, well, is the rose successful? Well, now you have to, you can't just, there's no, like, you can't look at it and go, well, yeah, I think so. You've got to compare it to something else. Like, is it as pretty as, uh, you know, an, the, uh, another flower, right? As a daisy. And then you go, well, yeah, of course it's prettier than a daisy. But then, but then but you look at the daisy, are you thinking, is this, the daisy successful? Is it pretty? Well, compared to what? You, you get what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't stand alone. So when it doesn't stand alone and we're always having to compare to have this like measurement of success is to compare it to something else. I love what he says. He says, then there's no freedom. We don't get to play. We get played. I'm going to say that again. Okay. 
if it's not a standalone phenomenon because it's always, you know, being compared to something, we don't get to play in that world. We get played. And I was like, oh, my God, isn't that the truth, right? So, uh, not the truth, but isn't that a possibility, right? There's another thing as the truth. Well, anyway, anyway, um, so here's what we're going to do. You want to start sharing what has it been like? So this is the, question, the third question you want to start looking at. Start to share what has it been like to live in success. Every person in this, in, on this call has experienced success to one level, whether it was getting good grades, whether it was, um, you know, uh, having success in your business, whatever the case may be, start looking at what has it been like, okay, to live in success. And start looking at that, you know, put the good, put the upsides, the downsides, everything, the whole world, okay? What has it been like for you? You want to ask this question to your guys, but you also want to start looking at it for you. And, um, and here's what we're going to start exploring. Exploring is that the moves that are being determined to have that type, the moves that were determined to have that success when you experienced it were determined by the current paradigm that you have of success, not necessarily by you. It was by your beliefs, your, you know, the current paradigm that you live in. That's what determined the moves that you made. The actions that you took were based from that old paradigm, Okay. So we're going to keep distinguishing what is inside that paradigm. What is inside that paradigm that has us do what we do, think what we think, measure what we measure, okay? So here is, um, I mean, so we just started looking at success, okay? So that's the foundation of it. We're going to look at what the upsides, what are the downsides. I want you to start looking at what has it been like, what does it look like to live, um, to live in success. Now, here's the definition. If this may um, help you or contribute to you, and that is, what is success? Okay, everybody has a different definition of what that is. But really, something that we can all agree on, okay, and that is success is having things turn out as planned. Write that down. Success is having things turn out as planned. Now, there's all kinds of definitions of success, but this is one thing we can all agree on. Because if your definition of success is having a three-bedroom home and a Honda, and then things turned out as planned, you're, you, in your eyes, in your mind, you're successful. Now, if your definition of success is living in a mansion in Bel Air with a Ferrari, but you're living in a little house with a Honda, you're not living in success, even though that's somebody else's definition of success, because it was, it was things turning out for him or her, but not for you. So one of the things we can all agree on is success is having things turn out as planned, okay? So you want to start looking at, because you cannot get success with different strategies um, outside of that paradigm, because it's like what we call, for those of you who've done a lot of Anthony Robbins work, it's what he calls your winning formula. So for things to to turn out as planned, there is something that all of us do. I know for myself, I know my winning formula. You all do. You really start to think about when you have been successful, what did you do, okay? And one of my winning formulas, for example, is that I become this, like, I don't want to say the word obsessed, but I can't think of another word, but I become laser focused. I become so laser focused, and I X other things out, and I'm like, tunnel vision, go, 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 and I become like this um, soldier, right? I'm like, go, 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 go. And then, you know, and then I'm like, oh my God, I forgot about my body. Oh my God, I forgot about my relationships. Like that's my winning formula. I like just emerge myself in something. Okay. And there's a certain way that I, that I'm being when I'm in that, when I'm in that mode. Okay. So I know my, and we've all felt it. Like it's like yesterday I was talking to somebody and they said, I want, let's call her Mary. She's like, I want my old Mary back. See, what she was saying was, I want my formula back. What she doesn't realize is she has complete access to that the moment she chooses to. Okay? So, you know, we're going to start looking at what is that old paradigm? What is that paradigm that we are living in? Because to do more of that is living in the old paradigm. Now, here's what's really great is that, before we had this definition of success and before we were comparing ourselves to other people, 
before we had that concern, okay, I love that word, before we had that concern of success, we were free to live as we were. We were free to live and to be, okay? And so this seminar, he said to us, he said, one of the, one of the commitments and one of the outcomes of the seminar is to rehabilitate that. And so the definition of rehabilitate is to bring back to a natural, sorry, to bring back to a normal, natural condition. I was like, oh, I love that. Because if you think about it, a kid, why is a kid successful? Because he says he is. Why is he like playing? I look at, I look at my, my nephew, Esteban. That guy, okay, he is a kid. I mean, you know, there are kids that are like 50 when they're five years old. My nephew is such a kid, like a kid kid. He puts his head, his face in cake and laughs. Like he just lives. He is just in the moment. He allows himself to just be. When he put this, when he put his face in that cake, he was just like, oh, am I going to be in trouble? Oh, did anybody look at me? Oh, is my makeup messed up? Like, none of that. There were no concerns. He just, he was just in the moment. He enjoyed it, right? Why I'm saying this is because what ends up happening is when you are not, when you don't have a concern for success, you are free to live. So one of the promises that he is giving us, okay, in the seminar is this. He says the outcome of the seminar is to reveal, okay, no, that, that's the outcome of this one. Hold on. So one of the promises, where is it? Okay, well, I don't know where it is, but I, one of the words, because I was like, I want that. He said that one of the things about that we're going to be looking at with the seminar is that we're going to be looking at what, um, how, to, how to take it back to your normal state and to have freedom and happiness around it, okay? And I was like, I, that, those are the only two words I remember. I'm like, I want freedom. I want happiness. So, you know, one of the things that we're going to start looking at in the next couple of weeks is what is your current definition? What is your paradigm? And how can we take it back to that normal, natural, that normal, natural state when you were freely expressed and you were, you had the natural ability to play and to express yourself completely. Okay. And, um, and so to conclude with all of this, here's what I'm going to leave you with. I'm going to leave you with looking at, yes, what is your upsides? What are your downsides to success? And what has it in the, what was the other one? What was it? Uh, what has it been like to live in success? And what has it been like to live in success for you? Because what we're going to be doing in the next couple of weeks is we're going to start creating. Now, I know it's going to be challenging because, um, you know, it's very different to do a 30-minute conversation than to be immersed in a seminar for three hours. So for, I'm going to be in the seminar for three hours for the next three and a half months, every week. And, uh, you know, it's my commitment to invest in myself. And I really encourage you guys to do, you know, that is something that fulfills me you know, um, along with dancing and things like that. So you got to start looking at what are those things that bring life to your life? Totally off the subject. Well, actually, not really, because that, that would be a definition of success for me, is things turning out as planned, meaning that doing things that make me happy, doing things that fulfill my heart, doing things that bring me joy. And one of those is investing in, in like, in me. You know, I have this um, quote that says, there's no investment, there's no better investment than investing in yourself. I strongly believe that. You know, you've got people that have this Ferrari, but eat like not such healthy food. Like that does, to me, to me, doesn't make sense. Now that's my definition of success. Obviously it's not his, right? Which is fine. I'm not placing judgment. All I'm saying is start looking at what is success for you and what are the things that make you happy? What are the things that fulfill you? What are the things that make you feel alive? And start doing more of those. So one of them for me is going to this, um, these classes every Wednesday. Um, it just makes my, it makes my head, makes me like, makes me think correctly. Because sometimes my brain doesn't always, not my best friend. Anyhow, so one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to start looking at how to have these breakthroughs in the current paradigm so that it can be fully expressed. Okay, so he said to us, and I'm saying this to you, ex you know, expect new unexpected results. He's like, be on the lookout, create, generate new unexpected results. And I was, I love that. And I was like, you know, so, so then now my last question, my last homework for you, okay, is number four. And that is, what is the possibility that you want to create for yourself for the next couple of weeks? 
what is the possibility you want to create for yourself when you think about success? Okay, and start creating in what if you could define that new paradigm and you could give a new color, a new world, what would that new paradigm look like? Okay, and what actions would you take inside that new paradigm? So, for I know you don't know what that is, because here's the thing whatever you're saying, it is the old you that's making that new paradigm. So, it's, it's like the old you is thinking that is creating a new a new you. The old paradigm is what's creating the new paradigm. So it's just a modification of the old paradigm with a new color, but it's the same. I don't know if that makes sense to you. So but let's just start looking at, okay? And, okay, and so then lastly is this, and that is, and this is not really a homework, this is just a personal request or a personal suggestion, and that is to start looking, to start having your life be a laboratory for what it is to be human. Have your life be like this experiment of what it's like to be human and what is it, and, and especially what is it like, the new, a laboratory, what does it mean to be successful, okay? Because when you can start looking at that or your life looking at that, you're going to start having more consciousness. And one of the things I'm going to encourage you to do, because so many people say, oh, be conscious. Well, what the heck does that mean, right? Be conscious. Be aware, which I totally, listen, I'm like the first one to tell you that. But here's the thing I'm going to ask you to do, is to be conscious of your thoughts. Be conscious of your actions. Be conscious of how you interpret things. Be conscious of how you relate to people. Be conscious of the things that make you happy. Be conscious of the things that disempower you. You get the picture? Okay. So one of the things I'm going to encourage you, and this is not a homework because it is an ongoing request that I feel that all of us should take on, and that is to have to use our life as that laboratory to discover ourselves, and to discover ourselves in that world, and what is it? What is it like to be human? What is it like to have a new realm of possibilities show up because we created them, because we chose them? So, um, yeah. With that said, I don't want to. It's like almost okay. Yeah, I already. Oops, I already went over by a minute. I am so sorry. Okay. Well, with that said, let me go ahead and um, end the call and see if anybody has any questions. Hang on. <laughs> 